They often say that death is the ultimate freedom. Freedom from suffering. Freedom from the burdens we carry. Freedom from the one being carried. Some Christians believe that after death, we finally start living, unchained from the flesh that keeps us living in sin, seeking out vain pleasures, accolades, constructs of the ego. Buddhists say we're all to be reborn, and the Hindus believe we continue to do so until we finally figure it all out. I don't want to die. I like the kind of freedom I have right now, I think. My existence is a colorful spectacle, pulling from even the most intangible possibilities of the spectrum. I am a woman. And I am a mother. I'm the first generation born in a free country where I have access to education. And so therefore, I am a student. And I am part of that privileged group of people in developed worlds who attend something called a university. Here I study religion. And I study communication. I live in a relatively safe city, nestled in a snow-covered valley where the economy is somewhat protected thanks to the civil servant backbone. It's quaint here. It's clean. In fact, it's considered one of the best places to live in North America. Perfect for the nuclear family. People here have the freedom to enjoy leisurely activities, to enjoy a well-manicured public sphere to enjoy themselves how they will under the banner of democracy. They live in the appointed capital of the country who believes in freedom of speech. We are privileged. I am privileged. Privileged enough to have two addresses, so to speak. One is situated in a neighborhood surrounded by canals, creeks, and charming heritage, diplomats, embassies, and desirable elementary schools. My children attend one of those. And on the other side of the tracks, marginalized from that aforementioned zone or tax bracket, is where I actually live. But hey, it's only a five minute drive from the land of what the lack of restriction can buy you. Some may argue whether this capitalistic system is really democratic or not. And my critical idea of media makes me suspicious about freedom and consumerism. The pace of trying to keep up with the social paradigm has in fact left me with very little free time. I could argue that at times it's hard to find five minutes of freedom in my hectic schedule to remember to eat, to have a bath, to slow down, to practice my piano or to maybe even indulge in a five-minute fantasy, like the one where I'm alone, playing an organ by the candlelight. I might be an economic slave, but if given the choice, there's things I would never give up. Like my princess. Keep your head up, little one, and troubles leave behind. Like my prince, don't fall to pieces, little the morning one. time so has been designed. Ooh, my new feminist ooh, loving boyfriend, my mom, my ooh, friends, 
my car. They say you die in the class you're born in. You take a penny, you leave a penny. Got a postcard from my brain. Contents of which resulted in. But I continue to fight against the odds in the hopes that my two little angels will have just a little less stress and more opportunities than previous generations. I hope I have left them with enough. Did I? Did I show them how to use the tools they were born with? To love who they are? To trust their instincts? It hurts to think I may have no control over when I will go or how the coin will drop. Oh,